Um, so my biggest challenge, I believe, would be dying to myself, um, surrendering what I want and allowing God to move, because that's probably the biggest challenge any Christian has. But in this place, it's been a big challenge as I've had girls come. Um, I had one girl come from El Salvador, and about two months in, she shared, um, my little daughter, five years old, has nowhere to go. Um, and so my heart broke, and I said, this house isn't made for children. But what would Jesus do? And so I received a five-year-old girl who lived here for a year. Um, and it became one of the biggest blessings, even though it was one of the biggest challenges. Um, I've also had a girl come who's pregnant. And so um, I think it's just understanding that God moves in ways beyond what I can understand. Um, and I have to be a reflection of His grace and mercy. And so when I understand His grace and mercy for me, I'm able to extend that. But a lot of times I don't think I've understood that. And so understanding of surrendering my will and allow God to move, and that's why it's called Kairos, because it's God's time, not my time, and allowing God to move. So there's been times where I've wanted to help a million girls, um, but I've learned that until they're tired and worn out and that they want to change, um, transformation won't happen, and I'll be working uphill versus when they're ready to change, God does the work. And so I would say that's probably the biggest challenge I've had so far. So where have I seen the hand of God? I would say from the very beginning. Um, as I was planning to look for a piece of land, at that moment I had $5,000 in the bank. Um, and I remember telling my parents, I'm planning to uh, buy a piece of land and build a house. And they said, you're crazy. You can't do that without money. Um, but I said, well, I believe God's going to help. And so um, I remember that I had found this piece of land where I'm standing today and as I was coming to see the man on Saturday, Wednesday morning, I sat in prayer, and I remember telling God, if you're in the middle of this, I need the guy to drop from around $35,000 to $25,000. So a $10,000 drop in price for no reason, so that I know that God was in the middle of it. Um, and after I prayed that, I said, is, is this real? Can you ask? Can you say that to God, that he's got to drop $10,000? Um, but I had faith in what I had just prayed, because it says, ask and it will be given. And so Friday morning, I received a message from Christ for the City that a $20,000 donation had come into Christ for the City for my house, which overwhelmed me beyond belief because, first of all, who moves $20,000 so that I can have a house? And that was the first point that I realized God had something much bigger in store for this place. And so I remember talking with the man the next day and him sharing that the property was actually listed around 60000 and he'd already dropped it to thirty five. And so in my head I said, there's no way he's going to agree to 25000 But as he finished, I said, well, what's the lowest you can go? And he said, I've always been open to offers. And so I said, well, I have $25,000 in the bank. And he said, if it's in my hands on January 15th, it's yours because I feel like God is in the middle of this. Um, and so a complete stranger, a lawyer, telling me that God is in the middle of this it was just another confirmation of God. And so we began building, and I remember I kind of, are, well, I remember that um, as we were building, God began to speak that this place was beyond just my house, and that it was going to be the place that girls were going to be transformed, and that um, addictions were going to be broken, suicide, gang members. Um, it was going to be a center, an epicenter of transformation. And so I remember telling God, okay, if you're in the middle of this, you're going to have to provide. Um, and so I had just the money for the container and to build a room, a bathroom, and a kitchen. And at that point I said, all right, God, I'm going to build in faith. And I remember calling my parents and telling them that I was going to add a second floor and I was going to open my house up to girls. And they said, you're crazy. This, you, do you not understand? You can't build without money. And I said, well, it's what God's telling me to do. And today you can see the house. Um, you can see the blessing of God. You can see how God has provided. And he's used many people to be a part of what he's doing here. And that's why the name Kairos was the name God gave me, because it's God's timing. Um, from the beginning, it's been God's timing. It's been God's choice. And his heart has been for the transformation of these girls. And each girl that's come through here, God had them ordained to be here. This house was raised up so that they would be transformed because the majority have been rejected, um, they've been abused, they've been lost, and they've been trapped in addiction without hope. Um, but this has become their, their last opportunity where God is giving them new life. Um, and I'm watching and have the privilege of watch, watching God move. And so um, miracle after miracle happens here. Um, this past week, Judy, um, one of the girls here, had the opportunity to reunite with her um, son that she hadn't seen in a year. Um, and that's just the power of God because she didn't move anything. She tried for years to reconnect 
um, and it hadn't worked, but when you allow God to move, things flow in ways that you've never imagined. And so to watch a mom get be getting to be reunited with her son and getting to um, share what God's doing, is it's powerful. Or to see a family come to Christ because um, their daughter has come into Kairos. And so understanding that um, the addiction doesn't just affect the person, the immediate person, it affects the entire family, but the transformation also is going to impact their entire family and community. And so together, Refuge with Kairos, we're seeing God move in extraordinary ways. Okay, so I want to thank you for watching this video and, and hearing what God's doing. And I want to invite you to be a part of what God's doing here in Kairos through your prayers, if you'd like to financially support, but also if you'd like to come. Um, my house is open to you. You can come and learn and be a part of what God's doing and be a blessing to each girl that's come into this place. Um, also, I want to challenge you just as what God's done in me. Um, I'm no different than you. I'm just somebody who's heard God called and learned that when I surrender to Him, He moves. And so um, it's very ordinary things that I do. Um, sitting at the, the kitchen table, drinking coffee, and letting these girls pour out their heart. Um, praying for them, Bible studies, uh, walking through life with them. We go and have pizzas normally on Friday night. It's pizza night here. Um, and we invite other girls from Pavis to come join us. And so it's simple things that make a big impact. So it's just listening to God and moving. And so I just want to challenge you to allow God to use your life to transform the life of somebody else.